What's the difference between a low frequency inverter and a high frequency inverter? And which one do you need? Let's find out. How does an inverter work anyway? Well, it takes DC or direct current, the type of electricity found in solar panels or batteries. The current flows in one direction only in DC. So we send it through the inverter where it turns it into alternating current or AC. That's the type of electricity used by the appliances in your house. The current changes directions or alternates 60 times a second in North America, 50 times a second in most of the rest of the world. Okay, we're going to start with the DC or direct current. Um, notice that the uh, voltage is constant at 120 volts. Uh, in the real world, if this was coming off, say, a battery, over time it would slowly drop as the battery drained. But for this example, let's just keep it as a straight line. Um, the current is only flowing in one direction. But we want to alternate that current between positive and negative, meaning that the current is going to change direction in the cable. So to do that, we're going to run it through some switching circuits that are going to chop it so it looks like this 60 times per second. Now, for obvious reasons, this is called a square wave. Notice that the voltage now goes from positive 120 volts to negative 120 volts, which means it's now going in the other direction at 120 volts. Now, electronic equipment does not like to use a square wave. You can run some things off of it, maybe some lighting and heaters, uh, motors, and things like that. But most electronic equipment doesn't like this. To smooth this out, we're going to run it through some filtering circuits, but also a big, heavy, honking transformer. And this is going to smooth it out so it is a nice, pretty sine wave for us. And that's called a low-frequency inverter because the frequency that we're actually chopping that at is the final frequency of 60 hertz that we're going to... Um, use for our AC for powering our appliances. Now, I'm greatly simplifying this process just, just for clarity, so just stick with me on this. So let's look at how a high-frequency inverter works. Again, we want to end up with our voltage going between 120 volts and minus 120 volts. We want to have that happen 60 times a second. But now we're going to use these switching circuits to put more steps into it. Now, the wave is going from plus 120 volts to minus 120 volts and then back up to plus 120 volts. That's one cycle. That's still happening 60 times per second. The high frequency inverter is putting a lot more individual steps into these cycles. Let's raise the number of steps even more. You can see these little individual steps are still inside of the sine wave, even though the sine wave is at 60 cycles per second. The individual number of steps can be as high as 50,000. That's why it's called a high frequency inverter. So to smooth that out, we can use some filtering circuits and get our nice sine wave. And that is a very simplified version of what a high frequency inverter does. Okay, we're going to compare low frequency and high frequency inverters. I'm going to use grow watt, 5,000 watt inverters for both of these. So we're comparing the 5,000 watt DVM to the 5000 watt ES. Now, uh, because this has a big heavy transformer in it, it's going to be larger and heavier. So we're going to compare this 21 inches tall. Um, on the high frequency, it's only 19. We've got 17 inches wide on the low frequency versus 13 inches, eight and a half inches deep versus 5.3. So the low frequency is about 20 to 25% larger in all dimensions. It also weighs considerably more. It comes in at 103 pounds versus only 26 pounds for the ES, the high frequency. And you really appreciate this when you go to hang it on the wall, especially if you're trying to do that by yourself. So surge power. This is how much can it surge over its recommended 5,000 watts in this case. Um, this is for starting things like well pumps, um, compressors, uh, any kind of motors, air conditioners. And the winner is going to be the low frequency on this. Uh, you can see we get a surge of 15 kilowatts uh, against only 10 kilowatts for the high frequency. So at one point, it was basically considered um, if you needed to start big motors and so forth, you would go with a low frequency inverter. However, it's not really necessary anymore. You just have to make sure that the high frequency inverter 
that you're looking at uh, can handle these surges that you are going to throw at it. Okay, let's compare efficiency of the two inverters. And we're talking about just the inverter part of the unit, not the solar charger. Um, the low frequency inverter has 85%. High frequency inverter is 93% or 8% more. Um, overall, the high frequency inverters have come a long ways and that's pretty much the way to go. Just make sure that it can handle whatever kind of surges you're going to have on the loads that you're going to run. It is important, though, that you end up with a pure sine wave. Okay, you do not want to use a modified square wave inverter. They are uh, usually labeled as such. They'll say modified square wave somewhere in the specs. And these are not good for computers and electronics. So to make your electronics happy, stick with a pure sine wave. That wraps it up for this video. See you in the next one.